Marie Madeleine Diabry, Marquise de Brinvilliers, born in 1630 into a prominent family named Diabry, the Marquise's father, Antoine de Diabry, held several significant governmental roles and her mother, Marie Ollier, was linked to the founder of Sulpicians. Despite being the eldest child and cherished by her father, she wouldn't inherit his wealth and was anticipated to marry into affluence. In 1651, at 21, she married Antoine Gobelin, becoming Marquise de Brinvilliers, inheriting substantial wealth from tapestry workshops. They resided in an aristocratic district in Paris and had three children. She engaged in extramarital relationships, notably with Godin de Saint Croix. Her father disapproved, leading to Saint Croix's arrest, a factor that may have influenced her later actions. Incarcerated with Saint Croix, the Marquise's lover, in the Bastille, she developed an interest in poison, possibly influenced by fellow prisoner Exili, an expert on poisons. After release, Saint Croix, now her husband, started an alchemy business specializing in poisons, where he taught her the art of poison making and vengeance. Many researchers examining the Marquise's case have suggested that she conducted preliminary poison experiments on unsuspecting hospital patients before eventually poisoning her own father. This hypothesis is rooted in a report from Gabriel Nicolas de la Reine, the lieutenant general of the Paris police, who described how the Marquise, an attractive and refined woman of noble birth, found amusement in observing the effects of different poison dosages on the ill. Supporters of this theory emphasize the societal context of the Marquise's time, wherein a woman of her stature could easily commit murder without arousing suspicion. During that era, noble women often visited hospitals to aid the sick, providing an opportunity for the Marquise to test her poisons on already ailing patients without raising eyebrows. She reportedly conducted her poison trials at the Hotel du Hospital near Notre Dame. The hospital's chaotic and overcrowded conditions, coupled with its focus on spiritual salvation over medical care, contributed to deaths, even under questionable circumstances, going unnoticed. Additionally, she experimented on her own servants, administering food tainted with experimental poisons. Notably, the Marquise was not prosecuted for these actions as they only came to light after her execution. In 1666, the Marquise initiated a slow poisoning of her father, who eventually passed away on September 10. She enlisted a man named Gaskin to administer poison over time within her father's household. In the week preceding his demise, the Marquise and her children were invited to stay with him. Employing a concoction known as Glazer's Recipe, she administered multiple doses to him, causing his seemingly natural death with her at his side. An autopsy attributed his passing to natural causes exacerbated by gout. Following his death, she inherited a portion of his wealth. Rapidly depleting these funds, she turned to poisoning her two brothers, expecting to inherit their share of their father's fortune, as she believed herself to be their rightful heir. Her strained relationship with her brothers posed a challenge, prompting her to recruit Jean Hamelin, known as La Chaussée, to work as a footman in their household. La Chaussée's initial poisoning attempt on Antoine Diabry failed, with Antoine suspecting foul play due to a metallic taste in his drink. However, during an Easter feast, Antoine fell ill after consuming a pie and passed away on June 17, 1670. The second brother met a similar fate shortly thereafter, dying in September of the same year. Autopsies raised suspicions of poisoning due to unusually colored intestines, although the official cause was recorded as malignant humor. Despite the proximity of their deaths and shared circumstances, La Chaussée evaded suspicion. He was even esteemed by the younger Dre brother, who left him a generous sum upon his own demise. The discovery of the Marquise's poisonings didn't occur until 1672, following the demise of her partner and co-conspirator, Saint Croix. Some assert that Saint Croix's death resulted from an accident involving his own poisons, while others contend he succumbed to an illness. When he passed away, Saint Croix was burdened with debts, and a box in his possession contained incriminating letters exchanged with the Marquise, along with poisons and a note referring to money from her around the time her father fell ill. These items were to be handed over to the Marquise upon his death, but were instead given to Commissary Picard for further investigation. 
La Chaussée, previously associated with St. Croix, disclosed suspicious details about his laboratory to Picard, who informed him of the contents of the box, causing La Chaussée to flee and eventually implicate himself and the Marquis in the crimes. After torture, La Chaussée was executed on March 24, 1673, while the Marquise was condemned in absentia on the same day and fled to England upon news of the discovery of the box. She managed to evade authorities for a period, relying on funds sent by her sister. Until her sister's death in 1674 left her in dire financial straits. Remaining on the run, she shifted locations frequently, residing in Cambrai, Valenciennes, and Antwerp, until her eventual capture in Belgium in 1676. In Liege, she rented a room in a convent, where she was recognized, leading to her arrest upon alerting the French authorities. Among her possessions was a letter titled My Confessions, in which she admitted to poisoning her father and brothers, and attempting to poison her daughter, sister, and husband, though the latter attempts were unsuccessful. She also confessed to numerous affairs, and acknowledged that three of her children were not fathered by her husband. While some scholars question the authenticity of her confession, its contents were heavily utilized against her in the French court. Contemporary figure Madame de Savine mentioned her in her letters, illustrating the gossip within the French nobility. During her extradition to France, the Marquise made multiple suicide attempts, and upon her return, she was interrogated in Maziers before being incarcerated in the Conciergerie, a prison in Paris. In a letter addressed to her daughter, Madame de Savine detailed how the Marquise's trial captivated the entire city of Paris. During the initial questioning, the Marquise skillfully pretended ignorance, skillfully avoiding direct answers regarding the allegations against her. She neither confirmed nor denied her involvement in the deaths of her family members or her affair with St. Croix, instead feigning unawareness of these events around her. The early stages of interrogation focused heavily on tracing the flow of money between the Marquise, St. Croix, and Panadier, the Marquise's financial supporter. As the trial progressed, the Marquise shifted her strategy, denying all accusations and placing blame on her former lover, St. Croix. However, the course of the trial took a significant turn with the testimony of one of the Marquise's former lovers, Jean-Baptiste Brian Court. Brian Court asserted that not only had the Marquise confessed to poisoning her own family members to him, but she and St. Croix had also attempted to kill him. He provided compelling evidence against her, revealing her involvement in these crimes. In response, the Marquise dismissed Brian Court's allegations, attempting to discredit him by highlighting his reputation as a drunkard. Her attempts to cast doubt on his credibility were unsuccessful, leading to a shift in perception. Subsequently, after a final round of interrogation, the court reached a verdict of guilt for the Marquise based on the mounting evidence. As a result, she was sentenced to torture before facing execution by beheading, followed by the public burning of her body, serving as a grim spectacle for the public. In the prevailing Catholic context of France during her execution, the Marquise was provided a confessor in her final moments. This responsibility fell to Abbé Edem Pirat, despite his lack of prior experience ministering to criminals nearing their end. Pirat documented an elaborate account of her last hours, a copy of which is preserved within the Jesuit library in Paris, delving into her final moments and tracing the trajectory of her life leading up to her crimes. As part of her sentence, preceding her demise, the Marquise underwent a form of torture known as the water cure, entailing the consumption of significant volumes of water in a compressed time frame often administered via a funnel. Pirat's account highlighted that, in the face of torture, the Marquise expressed a willingness to confess to all, albeit realizing that this wouldn't mitigate her impending ordeal. Under duress, she provided no fresh revelations beyond her previous confessions except for admitting to once selling poison to a man planning to murder his wife. After enduring four hours of torment, she participated in a final confession session with Pirate within the confines of the prison chapel. Due to prevailing laws, she was denied the opportunity to partake in communion before her execution. Exiting the chapel, an assembly of aristocrats gathered to witness her march towards execution, creating a somber spectacle as she and Abbe Pirat proceeded to the place to grieve. 
Draped in a customary white slip, typical attire for the condemned, the Marquise embarked on her death procession. En route to her execution, they paused at Notre Dame, enabling the Marquise to perform the Amand Honorable within the bustling cathedral. Upon arriving at the place to grieve, the Marquise was disembarked from the cart and positioned on a raised platform. Her executioner shaved her head before unsheathing a sword to sever her head from her body. The surroundings teemed with spectators, eager to catch a glimpse of the event. Among them was Madame de Savine, whose renowned letter makes reference to the Marquise's execution. Subsequent to the beheading, the Marquise's remains were incinerated. <laughs>